Good morning. Welcome to A Web of Stories. My name is Melinda. Well, good morning if you're watching this in the morning. Otherwise, good whatever time of day it is. It is still morning for me. Um, it is a little later than I had hoped, but I got sucked into something. <coughs> anyway, I'm here to do my weekly uh, wrap up to go over kind of what's been going on in my week and what I read and what I am currently reading. Let me get my screens up here. Right. One second. I am not prepared. There we go. <laughs> anyway, this has been um, an okay week up until yesterday. So if you watch my channel, you know, a while ago, I had this weird thing where I had a friend of mine who had been diagnosed with cancer. Um, and then I kept reading short cancer short stories and it was really upsetting me. Um, good news is I think things are managed with that friend and um, prognosis is good. <sighs> yesterday though, um, I said before that this friend and I and another friend were a group of three really. Um, there used to be four, but one died of cancer um, several years ago. Um, and then there's the one who was diagnosed with cancer. And then just yesterday, um, the other one was uh, diagnosed with a not, as my one friend said, not so great <laughs> form of cancer. Um, it's apparently pretty serious. She's actually going to be in the hospital for six weeks to go through aggressive treatment. So we just got that news yesterday. So yesterday my reading was like out the window because, you know, I, I, I'm going to like, I think now because I'm not doing short story September, like if I come across those short stories about cancer, I'm going to skip them. <laughs> I can do that now. But yeah, so the, my reading was kind of out the window yesterday. So um, if you're on my Discord, details below, please join. Um, I was asking for recommendations and I'm going to put that out here. So I'm trying to think of what, I haven't gone to see her yet because um, I'm waiting for her to tell me what would be a good time to go see her. Uh, it sounds like with her treatment, it's pretty intense. So a lot of it depends on when she's getting her treatment and when she's going to feel up for visitors. But um, I want to bring her some things, of course. Um, and I was thinking as far as reading, um, I think like short stories would be a really good choice or maybe essay collections. So something that's like a shorter form, because I know um, everyone I know who has gone through any kind of chemo has had to deal with chemo brain. So I think maybe something shorter. Um, I'm also, and I didn't bring this up in Discord, I would probably throw in graphic novels. If there's graphic novels people might recommend. My things are, I want them to be kind of like up and a little bit, <sighs> brainless is not a great word, but <sighs> non-stressful, uplifting. It, 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 if it's brainless, it's fine too. Um, things about my friend. She does not like celebrity memoirs, which is too bad because I would have had a whole bunch to give to her then. Um, she loves David Sedaris, but she has read all his books. So anything like David Sedaris would be great. Um, yeah, she reads a lot like I do. And well, like not right now because apparently short stories I read are like disturbing and dark. Um, <laughs> so... You know, we're looking for uplifting and light and, you know, just sort of things to hold her through. I'm going to get her other things too, but I'm looking for recommendations like that because that's not generally what I read. So if you have any, please put them down below or join my Discord and you can find my little question there and you can answer it right there. So yeah, that's a thing that's happening. Um, this weekend, my brother-in-law is going to come down at some point, which means I better make the guest room bed. Um, he always comes for Halloween. The kids love it. Um, although the kids are, it used to be he would take them trick-or-treating, but now they're like old enough. Well, my daughter goes with her friend and then I make them take my son. So they go without adults now, but, um, it gives my husband time to kind of hang with his brother and do things. And I think, I don't think my brother-in-law is coming until tomorrow. I hope I got some picking up to do around here. Um, but apparently my son informed me that um, my husband is going to take us. And by us, I do not mean me. I'm not doing this. <laughs> to go see the Five Nights at Freddy's film tonight, which looks like a like starter horror film, um, which my daughter will not have a problem with. It might freak my son out. And my husband gets to deal with that because I'm going to stay home. Maybe I'll rewatch um, Lessons in Chemistry because I cried through yesterday's episode again today too. too. So first two episodes were wonderful and I cried in a good way, like in an appropriate way through the third and fourth episodes, but it's so good. Um, yeah, I love that show. I'm just going to keep pushing it. Um, so yeah, we have that coming up um, after I finish filming this. And I'm going to like put some footage in kind of now because I'll film it and then come back and do editing magic. Um, it's the first day of my library book sale. So um, I'm going to go. I made a plan. Like I have a plan for books I'm going to look for. 
problem is that plan on my phone is like you have to scroll down several times to see the whole thing. It's not quite that long because um, there's several authors who I'm looking for books from their backlist. And one of those authors is Louise Erdrich. And I am not looking to buy books from her at the used bookstore because I want to get her books from Birch Bark because then I can get them, then they come signed. Um, so th there's other authors. So we'll see, we'll see what my luck is. Um, I told myself this is the only time I can go this month, but it goes until November 7th. So <laughs> next Wednesday, which is the first, I can go again. Um, that also means I'm probably going to film a haul video later today because I will have stopped buying books for the month. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's exciting. That is a little something to look forward to. But please, if you have any recommendations for my friend, please put them down below. So I'm going to kind of jump forward in time and put some like book, uh, book sale footage in here. And then I'll come back and talk about what I'm reading. These are all... The CDs and DVDs that are for sale. Actually, here are the DVDs. This is the inside of the room. I think the first day is usually the most crowded. It's definitely crowded today. And this is the checkout line. I didn't actually buy that many. Um, I'll talk about more in my book haul, but there's a line. But I don't think I did too much damage. I did get some books that don't count towards my TBR because they are just keeper shop books. So we'll see. I meant to get this shot before I went in and completely forgot, but that is my library from the outside. It's beautiful, relatively new. I want to say it's probably like 10, 15 years that it's been here. Um, but first trip to the library book sale is done. Um, I will be going back next week, but that will be November, so it won't count towards October. And you'll see the books I got in the book haul, which will be up probably on Monday. Okay, welcome back. Um, let me go through my reading. So I finished three books this week. The first one I actually did a video review of already, but I'll mention it here really quickly. And that is The Gingerbread Men. I loved this book, A+. Plus. Um, if you're looking for something spooky, but not scary or gory. This is a really good option because it's very spooky and unsettling, but there's no, it's not intended to be a scary book and it's not gory. Um, it's a gothic horror, but it's really a gothic fairy tale. Um, the one thing about this book is it's, it is released in the US, so you can get it in the United States and not pay an exorbitant amount, but um, it's from a small Scottish publisher, so the odds of being able to walk into a bookstore and just find it on the shelf are lower. Um, however, your independent bookstores can order it for you. Um, Bookshop.org, which is where I got my copy, uh, can order it for you. Can you get it through them? You can get it through Barnes & Noble. You can get it through that other place. Um, it is available on both Kobo and Kindle digitally and uh, Libro and Audible audio. So you can get it. You just might not be able to just walk into a store and get it. Um, but highly recommend this, linking the video down below. And then I finished um, on digital, so I don't have it because it was library book too. And that's Evergreen by Naomi Hirahara. Hirahara, sorry. <laughs> this is the follow-up to her book, Clark and Division. It is a mystery and it deals with a family. It centers around the main character is Aki and then there's her family. And Clark and Division was World War II, they were sent, just right at the beginning, they were sent to an internment camp. And then after a period of time, there was a program, which I was unaware, unaware of, where uh, Japanese Americans in the internment camps, if they could prove their loyalty, um, could l be sent out of the camp, leave the camp and be sent to a city, but not the city they're from. Um, and in this family, the older sister did that first and she was sent to Chicago. And then at some point after that, Aki, who's the younger sister, and her parents followed her, but by the time they get to Chicago, the sister has been killed, and then what happened? And that's all like like World War II stuff. And um, this is this one is set right after World War II, 1946. And Aki and her family, which now she is now married, a little bit of a spoiler there. <laughs> Sorry, she gets married between that Clark and Division and Evergreen. <laughs> um, but her husband is is still um in the military. Uh, so her and her parents moved back to Los Angeles and Los Angeles is very different now. They've lost their home. Uh, the business that her father worked at, which was a Japanese owned business is, 
it's still there. It's just not owned by the Japanese anymore. Um, their Japanese owner doesn't have it anymore. Um, so it's the recreation of the Japanese American society in Los Angeles after World War II. Um, I really enjoyed, that's what I, I, you know, I really enjoyed the Japanese American experience in Clark and Division. And I really enjoyed that here. And just based on that, I would recommend these books. I don't think this one has as strong a mystery as Clark and Division. Um, so there's that. I also find it a little bit weird that there's all these characters that we meet in Chicago who come from all over and some of which are from Chicago. Like there's this group of characters in Chicago, but almost all of them end up being in Los Angeles. So it's weird. I, I found that a little weird how this whole group of characters just sort of transplanted itself all together to a different location. Um, and yeah, some of the characters were from Los Angeles, so it made sense, but some of them weren't. So there was that. Um, I, I really enjoyed this book. I don't think it was as good as Clark and Division, but it, it's definitely, I'm happy I read it and I'm glad I was to continue able to continue on with these characters. Um, I don't know if this is going to be an, a continuing series. It's called the Japanese, these two books are called Japantown um, series if you look them up on Goodreads. I don't know, but because this didn't end like it felt like there was going to be another mystery, but then neither did Clark and Division. So I don't know, but I would recommend both those books. And then I finished the audio version of Turn of the Screw by Henry James. I'm glad I listened to it. I don't think I would have gotten through reading it. It, it. I don't think Henry James is for me, um, but I wanted to at least have this under my belt because I'm going to read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. In fact, I might make that my... I might be reading that starting that this week. Um, and I learned from, I read What Moves the Dead earlier this month. And then I read Follow the House of Usher. And I realized then I should have done it the other way. So I made a point of doing it that way with this one. You know, I think Henry James is either is or isn't for you. And I don't think he's for me, but I'm glad I have the story. So there you go. So what I'm reading now, I still have a bunch of short story collections I'm continuing on. Um, as I said before, I'm not going to go over them every week. When I start a new one, I'll kind of introduce it in the video. And when I finish one, I'll talk about it in the video. But I have nothing to report this week on those, although I probably will next week. Um, so let me talk about the other books I have. In print, I have three books going. The first is still The Victober Read, The Way We Live Now. Um, it is the 27th of October. The plan is to have this finished on the 31st of October. And that is not going to happen. Um, I've given up any hope of finishing this within October. Um, I'm just reading half an hour a day and I'll finish it when I finish it. And that's that. You know, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm glad I'm reading it. I'm interested in the story. Um, I know a lot of people have read this and absolutely loved it. I wouldn't say I'm there, but I'm enjoying it and it's fine. Um, it is a reminder. I think that I need to A, make an effort to read some more Victorian and classic literature because I think my brain sometimes gets out of it. Um, I will be in December for Remember December uh, for my prompt to uh, read a book you don't remember, you've read before, but you can't remember anything about. I am going to be uh, rereading Villette by Charlotte Bronte. So the first thing is I need to read more classic literature to keep my mind kind of going in that. And the second thing is I need to read it digitally because this print is tiny. <laughs> Um, luckily I do have a copy of Valette on my Kobo. I also have my hard copy from college, but I'm not reading that. It's, uh, I had much younger eyes then. Um, so it'll be easier that way. But one of the big challenges with this book is just the print size. And then I am reading, and I thought I'd be done with this. I probably could have finished it yesterday, but yesterday was out, out the door. Um, ah. The ABC Murders. <laughs> Sorry. The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. This is apparently the tie-in version with with uh, John Malkovich as Akil Poirot. I have heard that adaptation of this is terrible. So now I'm kind of, do I want to see how terrible it is or not? Um, I cannot picture John Malkovich as Akil Poirot. But um, anyway, I'm enjoying this one. For some reason, I had it in my mind that this was going to be like a... Like a while ago, a couple weeks ago, I read, um, oh my goodness, Rupert Grint is in this. I didn't even notice that. I didn't even know that that's Ron Weasley right there. I think he plays Hastings. Um, sorry, <laughs> squirrel. Um, what was I saying? 
oh, a, a few weeks, a month or so ago, I read um, Murder on the Orient Express, which I su surprisingly did not work very well for me because it was a very serious Perot novel. Um, and I thought it was kind of boring because there wasn't a lot of Perot's charm. It was just people talking to each other. All that being said, it does make for a great adaptation. I do think there's some good adaptations of that show and it, it makes sense as to why it's a good adaptation. And for some reason, I thought this was going to be the same way, but it isn't. There's a lot of Perot charm in this book. And um, Hastings, who I don't, don't really like Hastings generally as a character, but I like the device he plays as sort of the narrator. And he's a little bit more John Watson-ish um, in this book than he is in his other appearances. So I'm enjoying this. Um, I'll finish it in the next couple days. And then I am still slowly, just kind of now and then, working my way through Roman Stories by Jupa Lahiri. I'm not including this with my other short story collections. Um, I probably would have been farther, except I hit a long story, and I've been reading it at bedtime. And I knew that I was, like, too tired to continue for the past couple nights <laughs> with a long story. So I put it, excuse me, I put it aside um, just until, like, I would go to bed with more energy to read. So, um, yeah. I love Jupa Lahiri. I love Rome. This is a book created for me. Well, it, it just is. I love this. Um, so happy to have that. So digitally, um, on my Kobo, I am reading The Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon, which is a retelling or inspired by Frankenstein. Um, it feels very, and I think this is intentional, so this is not meant as a criticism, but it feels very B-monster movie-ish. Um, it's entertaining. I, I can tell now it's not going to be one that sticks with me. It's it's fine for passing the time. Um, I'm glad I'm reading it now right before Halloween because this would I, I probably wouldn't have patience for it any other time of the year. Um, but it's fine for what it is. And it's a quick read. So I'm going through it pretty quickly. And then um, on audio, I have actually started one of my nonfiction November books, and that's Platonic. Um, something about, there's a, a longer title of my computer died, so I can't see it. Something about using the science of attachment to make friends as adults or something like that. Um, I'm using this for the web prompt. It was an audiobook that I just happened to have in one of my cues. So, um, I'm listening to that. Um, I will say I had to, I'm a 1.2 person for my audiobook speeds. Um, usually I'm a 1.2 person. I never sped things up until I listened to... Uh, Barack Obama's memoir, which he narrates, which, oh my God, you need to speed that one up. I mean, wow, that man's a slow talker. <laughs> but even he talks about like jokes his kids make about him being a slow talker. But I generally listen at about 1.2. This one I had to bump up a little bit more. Um, it just, it was slow. The, the, just the, the cadence of speaking was so slow. And I think, I think I see that more when it's non-performers doing the narrating. So non, they aren't audiobook narrators who do a lot like Julia Whalen, or they aren't actors or actresses, but people like authors who read their own books. Because I do know that when reading an audiobook, you are directed to read very slowly. So they're talking slower than their normal speed. And if they're already a slow talker, that's really slow. So if you pick this up, I'm not far enough in to make any comment about the content, but I will say if you pick this up on audio, you're going to want to bump it up a little bit. <laughs> so that's what I have going on now. Um, even though you've already seen my book, my uh, book sale footage, um, I am actually going to stop this now and go to the book sale. Um, I will probably be doing a book haul video later today too, because I think I'm going to cut off my book buying for, for October today. Um, not saying I won't go back to the book fair, but or the book sale, but that won't be until November. Um, it goes to November 7th. So um, yeah, so I better go, get ready to go. Thank you very much. Um, please feel free to leave comments below. Any book recommendations that I can consider for my friend would be wonderful. Feel free to join my Discord. That information is also down below. And uh, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.